Welcome back to our Groundskeeper Chat Series. I am your host, Meg Kruger, and we are live from Daytona Beach here at the SFMA Conference. I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Christopher Bell. Hello, hello. And today we have our guest, Mr. Andy Amon. He is back for a second time. I am. Um, Professional Outdoor Solutions. And we're going to be talking all about building a brand, uh, visibility in the industry. You know, what it's like to just be a part of this industry. You know, your story, your turf origin story is probably one of my (laughs) favorites. Um, I've got plenty of questions coming your way. Um, But right before we started recording, you said you had a funny story. About the double M and Amen. Yeah, so uh, so I play. I went to University of Central Florida and played football. Okay. Um, and I spent my entire freshman year as Andy Omen. Okay. <laughs> and one day in spring football, we're sitting there, and uh, the guy whose locker was across me said, "Hey, Andy, why, why do they call you Omen? You have two M's in your name." This guy was not real smart, right? Uh-huh. I mean, this is, and uh, I said, "Well, actually, my last name is Amen." He's like, well, "Why do you let him call you Omen?" I was like, because I'm a freshman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious. I'm not going to go tell the coach, hey, you're wrong. So uh, so the next practice, every single coach called me by the right name and didn't even address it. Oh, wow. Didn't even address it. They were they just all of a sudden called me by the right name, didn't apologize, didn't say, hey, sorry. Just the so next that one practice, kid just told one all kid. the coaches? Yeah. Really? I yeah. love that. Yeah. Yeah. He, was so awesome. he wasn't so dumb after <laughs> all, was he? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, let me tell you where he is yeah. today. <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually often wondered where they <laughs> today. But he's a great kid. I mean, he's a great kid, but he just had a rough life coming up. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we had you in Savannah um, join us at the booth because your session made such an impression on me. Because in mm-hmm. one, it was because of that turf origin story yes you know a dad working at the the field and taking it okay well i'm gonna own this i'm gonna i'm gonna make this the best field that these kids play on and then how that has evolved to where you are today tell us a little bit about that yeah it was uh the the ballpark my i grew up playing football like i said my kids wanted to play baseball i didn't know anything about baseball but i but i figured i could coach so i coached all the way up to over 10 years old in my my now 29 year old made the championship game mm-hmm. and we had the game one uh, slow grounder going to the shortstop. We just needed one out game was over. We win the championship and the ball went to the shortstop flew over his head. Two runs came oh, in. We hop. lost the game. Mm-hmm. Right. So I've got all these 10 year olds crying who, <laughs> I mean, I came out of the dugout with my hands in the air because this kid was the best shortstop in the league. Thinking yeah. we're going to make this play. And, and I just I remember how crushed those kids were. And I said, what other sport, does the athletic playing surface change the outcome of a game? Yep. You know, and honestly, and I, and, I, and I was like, I don't know what to tell these kids that are all upset now. I mean, they'll get over it in a couple of days, right? But, mm-hmm. and uh, so then I started looking around. And I was like, well, you know, why did the ball bounce like that? This field's terrible. My front yard's kind of nice. So mm-hmm. maybe I can do something. So I started asking the questions. I had half a bag of fertilizer at home and I snuck in the ball, climbed the fence at the ballpark. With, and, the fer- uh, with a bag of fertilizer, <laughs> threw it on the field by hand. Oh, gosh. Uh, I swear to you, it was that bad. I mean, the field yeah. was that bad. So then I was like, you know, it started just, man, it just snowballed from there. And I just asked a lot of questions, yep. a lot of questions, and then realized that front yards and athletic surfaces are not the same thing yeah. at, by any stretch of the imagination. And it just, I just, it, it just was a lot of fun for me. And I had an amazing board of directors that just allowed me, just do what you're doing. Just keep going. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't like I had an unlimited budget, but they had there was zero field maintenance program staff. So I put together a program. I said, can I hire a couple of kids? Well, how much do you want to pay him? I said, what do the concession kids make? Let's do the same cost as concession kids. Yeah. And it just started snowballing. And actually, our attendance or our, uh, our league numbers went higher and higher as the fields got better and better. Okay. And, uh, and it was pretty fun. It was a lot of there's a there's a million stories I could tell that of great people that helped me along the way. So yeah, yeah. and I loved that it was you know how many parents can relate to that where they're like this feels crap. Oh, like, yeah. but the fact that you've turned it into where you yeah. know it's it's your livelihood now and how cool that is. It is it is very cool. I you know it took me 30 years to find my career that I wanted to be involved with. I guess so. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the complex was actually a joke. Like mm-hmm. people would not play there because it was so bad, so bad. so bad and so dangerous. And um, so I started working on the field my kid was playing on and then the next one up. Yeah. And they could, then, then the joke was, well, we know where Andy's kids playing <laughs> next year because yeah. that field's starting to look OK. Yeah. And again, I was just working with what I knew. And I, and again, I had a couple of great mentors and I like, tried this. You tried that. And I was like, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. And uh, and it just it just snowballed. So, yeah. 
Love that. And, you know, uh, I think one thing you said is asking a lot of questions, asking for certain things, asking for resources. For somebody, you know, whether they're a parent and they're interested in doing this or or they're new to the gig or they've just taken a promotion, how do they get over that barrier of just being scared to ask the question? Because no can seem so intimidating. It, and that's something that I never worried about was mm -hmm. no. Because the worst answer is no. And it's always going to be no until you ask the question. Yeah. Right. There's never a time it's not no unless you ask the question. So do you, I thought oh, we thought we had. In fact, we talked about closing down one of the fields in the board because we didn't have enough playing players. And it ended up being field of the year. But we're like, if we just shut that field down, we don't have any maintenance on it. You know, we don't have enough players. Maybe we should put multiple base steps on all this yeah. stuff. And I was like, Let, you know, what if we did this? And OK, give it a shot. So, I mean, I got my irrigation system by asking a question on a whim. Mm -hmm. um, I got my um, new LED scoreboards by asking a question on a whim. Um, so and, and, you know, Larry DeVito in front of us, I got I got to meet him on a whim just by saying, hey, would you guys send me to a conference to learn a little bit more about this? And they sent me up there. I walked in this place. I had no idea what I was doing and sit down at lunch as Larry DeVito sits down next to me and introduces himself. And yeah, I love that. Uh, it, it was that was, gosh, 20 years ago at yeah. least. So yeah. then you said he gave you his card and you're like, well, I'm never going to, you know, right. he's never going to respond to me. And and turns out he invited you out and got yep. to learn on the fly. Yeah, the, an labor. the answer is no. Right? <laughs> yeah. He said, he said, contact me. And I sat down, I wrote that email about four or five different times and deleted yeah. it. And I was like, what the heck? And just hit send. And I'm within an hour, I got a response wow. back from him and sent me his phone number. And um, so we did. And I, then I'd send him pictures. And got, this was so long ago, you had flip phones, right? Yeah. And you're sending pictures yeah. and saying, hey, what do, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? It's, it's and, amazing to me, the number of stories in this industry like yeah. that, where someone just had the guts just to ask yeah mm -hmm. and the uh, people are so happy to help this this um the camaraderie and sports tour management is unbelievable unbelievable i mean uh, uh, leah said it earlier today mm -hmm. and, and we all said it i could i could ask that guy i don't know who he is but i'd ask him what he does and <laughs> does he know can he help me out and he'd be like yeah let's sit down and let's talk sure. right all right ask that guy or that girl mm -hmm. and they'd all sit down and help you out because we're all in this together which is which is I've never, I've always been an athlete and a competitive person mm -hmm. and there's, there's competition, but it's yeah. friendly competition. Yeah. Right. And then when you, when you do something right, you want to share that mm -hmm. in this industry. It's not like you hide that to yourself. You're like, yeah, let's, I, I tried something different on the mounds or I tried something different on the infield and this worked really well. And, you know, I want more people to try this to see if it works for me. So, yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's the lifeblood of what makes us so unique and, and really why it translates perfectly for an athlete to stay in the game through this industry. It does, 100%. And I'm sitting here today with an artificial knee mm -hmm. from a very bad football field that I completely blew my knee out on. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm in this industry, I think back to that and said, my foot did slip out yeah. as I was making a cut. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sitting here with a fake knee. And not, now, I don't know. Right? Yeah. We'll never know the answer. Sure. But if that was a nice field, could it have been saved? Mm -hmm. But we were on a crappy practice field just playing, and that was the end of my career. Yeah, so. <laughs> terrible. That's awful. Yeah. Well, bring us up to present day. You know, you, you go from parent to turf enthusiast to, <laughs> you know, running a few fields at the complex to, you know, making that complex a community treasure yeah. to where we are today with Professional Outdoor Solutions. Yeah, so the story about Professional Outdoor Solutions, again, was one of those on a whim thing. I went to a Toro, mm -hmm. uh, sorry to use brands, but I went to a Toro event and uh, and uh, sat down. And I and again, lunch, apparently there's a common theme with eating. Yeah. And these two guys <laughs> sat across from me and said, hey, we're thinking about getting into sports turf. And I said, well, I'm kind of in it, but I don't know really what I, I'm going to kind of know what I'm doing, but I don't know the grass side of things as well as like you guys did. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we ought to talk. So we just kind of stayed in touch with each other. And uh, a high school called us and we all got together. It's the first time we kind of did a project. We're like, this is really working well for us. Uh, no kidding. Those two guys I met with you last night. Yes. That was over lunch. That was over lunch. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Never had met them in my life. That's crazy. And, and, uh, we wrote down numbers on napkins and handed it back and forth. And and they said, hey, you know, we, uh, Peoria, Notre Dame, which is a high school in central Illinois, called us and said, hey, we, you guys know we, somehow we got your name or from my complex. That's how they got me. One of their yeah. kids played at my complex and we need help on our baseball field. And I was like, well, I can't do that all myself. So I called these guys and said, yeah, let's go do it. 
Incredible. So we loaded up trailers with whatever we could find. <laughs> just went went over there and just give it a shot. See what happens. Honestly, honestly, and they were thrilled. Um, so then Alan, um, a few years ago, I think, gosh, that's probably more than a few. It's probably four now. Um, said I, his golf course was kind of floundering. He wasn't happy with his management, and he said, yeah. I'm, "I'm jumping." And he goes, you, and "He to this day will say I felt like I jumped off a cliff without yeah. a parachute." Wow. And, uh, and he's like, "We got to do this." And uh, the story about how we got our equipment is kind of fun too. But um, and then Ben just this last year jumped mm-hmm. full time as well. Yeah. Um, and he had he was 20 years at the same golf course. Loved the members, loved his crew, loved his staff, but he was just kind of burned out from the day one. And he said he doesn't miss a day of it. Huh. This is some of it, right? But, yeah. But that's the, you know, plowing a parking lot on Thanksgiving morning when he should be with his family. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to do that anymore. No, so, it's new adventure and exciting, invigorating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, and we've talked to a few guests today about, you know, what are the things, especially when, you know, it's the day in and day out of an operation. Um, and since you guys are a little bit more project based, you do have that ability to you know make it flexible but what are the things that you know fuel you like what's that fire that you see in the what like is it people playing on the field or is it when parents like that light bulb they're like oh this is what quality looks like like what is that for you that really like fuels you to the next project yeah i think uh, on the baseball side of things at least for me it was just watching kids show up to the complex and and i'd get kids lay on the grass and during mm-hmm. warmups and, you know, we're talking youth baseball. So they'd, yeah. they'd like do little angels out there or roll around like a dog. And, and, uh, and, you know, and it was like, it's, it's, it's grass. And there are people that would feel it with their hand. And it was like, you know, th- th- that was kind of really fun. But then, yeah. the, you know, the, when an umpire says to you, you know, we love umpiring at this field because there's never a bad hop. Mm-hmm. It's, it, you know, and it was always about safety, right? Safety from day one, the appearance comes last. And I think when you watch a game being played safe, being played fast, the, the players determine the outcome of the game. That's really yeah. cool. And now, now when we go to complexes, um, we just did a Division One softball field. And the maintenance guys were so giddy over the product that we were putting on the field. So cool. And the fact that it was going to be laser graded and when it rained, it was going to be fine. And they just were fascinated by the project. And it was kind of neat just to teach them about what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the first rain, sure enough, they called us and sent us a bunch of pictures going, <laughs> look at this. This is great. Um, so that's just satisfying people, I think, is, is a real big key rewarding. to it. All. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it is very rewarding. Very rewarding. So. And, you know, you guys operate in in, you know, your corner of the world, but how have you, you know, elevated that? You know, a lot of it is word of mouth, I'm sure. Yes. Like you said, people just, you know, the proof is in the product. Um, but, you know, how do you kind of elevate that brand or, or making it making it its own living, breathing thing so that I can pay the bills at the end <laughs> of the day? <laughs> right. Well, we probably haven't done the best job of marketing, but it's almost intentional. We wanted to grow slow um, mm-hmm. and grow precise. And that's kind of been our motto this whole time is, is you see companies that spin off and they go out and buy a whole bunch of equipment yep. um, right away. And then they try to sell <clears throat> what they bought. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of going about the reverse approach a little bit to it. Um, we uh, are, are good at what we do and we don't apologize for our prices and we don't apologize, but we don't apologize. Uh, we do back up our product. Yep. And we always say we're the BMW or the Porsche mm-hmm. of what we do. So, you know, we get these high school fields and and uh, <laughs> I told you this, I think I told you this story last night, right? So a soccer complex wants us to come and put a new soccer field in. And we yeah. gave them a price. Wow, that's really expensive. I said, yeah, I mean, it is, but we're going to do it right. And they said, well, we probably ought to get a bid from a landscape company. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, great. So are you going to hire basketball coaches to coach your kids then? <laughs> I because, love it. Right? I mean, yeah. like, honestly, so you, if you want a sports field to play sports on, you need to hire a sports yeah. manager. Yeah. Um, and there's, and there's. It's interesting because the board of this complex was 100% against it at mm-hmm. first. And now I'm starting to talk to them and realizing what we can do and why we do things. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and it's like, wow, you guys like really think about how the cleat interacts with the grass. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and how to regenerate goal mouths and yeah. how to. There's a reason behind that quote. It's yeah. not, yes. not just to upcharge you for fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you want it done and done right and guaranteed, then call us. Right. And, and, and honestly, we just left it at that. And, and hopefully, hopefully it calls. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be great if yeah, they did. So. Yeah. yeah. And how much of your job really is that? It's explaining the why oh, and man. having and really just having to bring people into the fold of what this profession is. Yeah, it's it's tough because it's so passionate. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's again, it's something about this industry is how passionate we are. And 
Um, there's no shortage of ego in athletics. Yeah. <laughs> whether you're an athletic director, whether you're a coach, whether you're a sports turf manager, whether whatever. And, you know, some of these coaches and some of these organizations think they know what they know. And it's hard to convince them otherwise. Yeah. Right. And I, I will be the first to admit I'm not the greatest at it. Um, and, I, and it's something that I work on constantly, just not blurting out at your mouth saying you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, and, and, you know, I'm, and I think a lot about the synthetic field world that's coming around. And I mm -hmm. think there's a great use for synthetic turf in, in places. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that there is not a good use for synthetic turf in other places. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it, it's interesting. It's just, um, I don't even remember what your original question was. <laughs> well, just explaining that why, yeah, and you answered yeah. it perfectly. Just that you know, it can be frustrating at times to have to do it over and over again. But yeah. if someone's not doing it, then it's it's not happening. Yeah, and you hear you hear of high schools that that somehow have three million dollars to put a synthetic turf in, whatever the price is. I yeah. don't know what the price is, right? Synthetic turf in, and I was like, you know, you know what, you could pay me, yeah, for the next ten to twenty years and have a natural grass field. And you know what? If I need to replace the natural grass field, I can still do it and stay under your budget. Yeah. And the, and the school's like, we don't have money. You know, so you give them bids. Oh, we don't have money. Well, you do have money because yeah. you want to put a plastic field in. And um, it's just a different pocket of money or a donor or something. So now we're trying to think, you know, how do we get to those donors ahead of time and say, hey, would you like your name on a safer field? On yeah. A, on a, you know, and. And uh, again, there's places for synthetic. There's sure. places for natural grass as well. So a lot of education. And, yes, uh, it's keeping up with the Joneses too for some of the facilities. Mm -hmm. Schools. Who was it that I heard today? They said not keep up with the Joneses, but be the Joneses. There you go. Right. And uh, somebody said that today, and that stuck with me because I'm like, you know, other than my little private youth baseball complex, we have not really. We've had a couple fields that we can showcase. Mm -hmm. um, we take care of University of Illinois' practice football field, which is great, and we help. Dan Thomas with a softball field who um, won field of the year. But Very then when cool. you talk to these youth um, facilities or these high, well, we don't need a college level field, but you can, <laughs> you yeah. can yeah. You, that's what they don't get. Uh, you know, and, and when you ever say, you know, we put this product in target field, mm -hmm. well, we don't need target field, but it's the same stuff. Yeah. And that's, so then you got to learn to educate yourself down. Right. And yeah. just say, Hey, I've got a product. <laughs> So it's uh, so that's the the interesting thing is trying to meet the level. Um, yeah, finding what resonates yeah. with them, you yeah. know. I had one one uh, small, very small high school that wanted their skinned indie foot in, ninety foot infield laser, or they wanted it improved. And I said, well, what do you want to do? And we're talking, and we're talking, and they're like, what do you think it's going to cost? And I, you know, gave them a number close to six figures, and they said, well, we've got about twenty five hundred bucks in our pocket. What can you do for that? I was yeah. like, well, not much. <laughs> right? Yeah. I can bring some hand rakes out and move it around. But, and so it's just the education, like you said, of, of not knowing what goes into it. Sure. Yeah. And the equipment. I mean, look around this room. It's just the specialized equipment is just so insanely expensive. Yes. And, and, it's, and it's grown exponentially over the last three or four years, for sure. Definitely. And yeah. the technology keeps advancing too oh. much. Yeah. I mean, the stuff we use today is... is I remember grading my first field with strings. Mm -hmm. We had I had a guy in the infield and a guy in the outfield, and I drew a, a paint circle in the in the grass and or in the dirt, and I went to the next spot and we like, throw some dirt in here and screed boarded across. Now I got a machine. I press a couple buttons on and I drive it around. And it's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That thing was really expensive, so it better be going all the time. So yeah, yeah. And how much of what you do is really? creating relationships with people in this room and so that you know you may not be using their product every day on the field but if you need that consultation or you need somebody to call on the phone how much of that like how That's important huge. is that yeah yeah i mean it's enormous i um I, there's there's nobody as i said earlier there's nobody in this room i wouldn't be afraid to ask a question yeah. to and um and you know there is some competition among product types you know you get their gear done to your and your Toro guys and, yeah. and whatever. Um, but everybody's here in the same respect. They're, they all want to work together. So um, just leaning on, I, I know somebody did, Leah just mm -hmm. did her, her, a complete minor league renovation, right? Yes. And yeah. so did um, Keith Winters. Mm -hmm. Well, we're about to do a synthetic, or a, not a synthetic field, a minor league field. And we're working with the company on it. And I, so, you know, I'm going to call those guys up and I, and I, you know, 
five years ago, I'd probably been nervous, but now, yeah. now I'm like, I'm going to call Lee up and say, hey, what did your contractor do that you liked and you didn't like? Yeah. And tell me so I can be a better contractor. And I've already hit her up and she's like, yeah, give me a call anytime. I'd love to talk to you about it. So, uh, you know, and, and you just feel comfortable doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. I, we, we talked a little bit about that. Um, just engaging not only on social media, but just tapping into the power of this community. Yeah. But yeah, when you are in your own corner of the world, how you can utilize social media. Um, I love what you guys did. You did that series on the your 25 days of Christmas. Yeah. yeah. And just, it was, you know, an education piece. It was a subtle promotion of what you guys do. Um, utilizing it to just, you know, whether that's building a network, recruiting people to the industry or having people think of you as a thought leader, just how that can be impactful. Yeah. We, we, we did that more for marketing than anything to be yeah. honest with you, because there's so many people that don't know what we do, mm -hmm. right? People here understand what we do, yep. right? At this level, but the local high schools and the lo they, they don't get it. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have enough local followers and enough local people that are like, wow, you, you guys do putting greens. You guys do, you know, soccer fields, you guys do baseball. Fields. Yeah. Yep. So we've got a bunch of equipment that we need to stay busy. <laughs> so, so, um, so it was really great and it was, it was neat to kind of showcase what we've done over the last year mm -hmm. uh, and hopes to bring more business and hope to bring more of awareness. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. it. It's, it's just like a fun way to it is. interact. It is. There. And it's amazing. And the Twitter verse, as you yep. said, right. Or X or whatever it's called <laughs> now is, is amazing. Uh, in the turf industry and in the yep. golf side and the, and the, sports turf side so i'm hoping it sticks around yeah yeah because um, i don't want to go to linkedin i know <laughs> right it's it's shaky ground right now but i'm like we've got to hold hold our own i they can't take this from us they already took away turf twitter which sounded so beautiful i know it did it was kind of uh, great so but you know i learned a lot from you this morning thank you you know i i don't think we're consistent enough about it and i've been a self-appointed marketing ceo or chief marketing officer for a company mm -hmm. self-appointed so i'm like wow i need to be a lot more consistent <laughs> yeah, yeah about how to do this well so. again there's no there's no way that and it, we've we've paid for services on our end where it's like oh this is the right time to send it and literally every time you log in that changes like yeah. even if you wrote the same exact thing and you, like say you logged out at that minute and just lost your post you've restarted yeah. and it's giving you the same like because i know this because when i um went and scheduled all my maternity posts. You know, <laughs> I was literally writing posts on the same day, every single day, like, and it would suggest a different time and really? different month and different day for each time I wrote the same. And I was like, okay, there, there's really no rhyme or reason, but I think that simple, just following a cadence that's sustainable. That's the biggest yeah. thing is, you know, don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket for two weeks and then be like, see ya. Like right. It, well, exactly. And it's just keeping your name in the forefront of for people. Sure. Yep. So, you know, a lot of, and we, and the tagging was big to us. So whenever we do a high school, we tag their athletic department. Love that. Uh, yeah. Or we tag their, or we hashtag their, their name or whatever. Mm -hmm. We try to, we try to do that. And it's been, it's been neat to see that kind of filter down. And like you said, you can start to see the, the statistics behind it. Well, that reached a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, whether they know or not, you know, we did a high school and it got 50,000 people that actually viewed the post. Yeah. And you thought, wow, that's pretty cool. It's pretty easy to get that reach. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. It is. Definitely. Yeah. And, well, and you know, talked a little bit about, you know, having you, your route to turf wasn't, you know, right out of high school or right out of college. So you had a lot of the skills coming to the tables. Like, you know, you had experience in other fields where, you know, you worked on that communication. You worked on mm -hmm. the selling element of it. For the next generation or people that are struggling in that element, what are those tools that they need to be adding to their tool belt at this stage in the game, at this evolution of a groundskeeper that you think, you know, beyond the grass, beyond the craft yeah. that they need to have? And I think it's uh, I think integrity is huge mm -hmm. in everything that you do. I've always preached that to my kids. Um, I've always said good things happen to good people. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's been my dad preached that to me. I preached that to my two sons and now my two stepchildren. I preach that to them all the time. Doesn't always go through their head, but you know, <laughs> uh, but then I think, uh, I think it's a confidence, but not an arrogance, yeah, right? Yeah. So you got to be confident in what you do and you've got to be outgoing. Mm -hmm. You have to sell yourself because you're replaceable. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, groundskeepers used to think they did their job when nobody noticed them. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Right. If I don't know who the groundskeeper is, well, then he's doing his job. Yeah. But I think we as an organization in SFMA has to get better at that. Mm -hmm. You can't watch a golf tournament, a PGA golf tournament on TV 
without them mentioning the superintendent sure. and talking about the type of grass they have and all that stuff. So somehow we've, uh, and I'm on the advocacy committee mm-hmm. and we've got to get sports announcers to do that. Yeah. We can't buy commercial space, yeah. right? We can't, we can't take out a Super Bowl ad, but it'd be really cool if somebody well, they mentioned... have to gain a passion for it almost Correct. like we have to have them buy into what we're doing. Yeah. And, and I... we just talked about that with Larry. Like he said the same exact thing, like on the golf side, you know, they always are talking about the superintendent. I, I shared with him at those big tournaments, they literally bring him a trophy. Yes. Like, and they give him his whole, they, they bring him a trophy before they even crown the winner. Like it's, it's incredible. And how do we replicate that in our right. industry? Yes. And I think we're getting there, you know, we're behind, we're behind golf, right? Golf has always been about beautiful grass and playability and all that stuff. And, 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 and now the amount of money being spent in athletics and the expectations of athletics is we're just, we're just behind. I think yeah. we'll get there. Mm-hmm. I really do, but I think we need to get there quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think, uh, I think the synthetic guys have done an amazing job marketing their products. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that the natural grass guys got to do a better job of it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what kind of starts here. And you'll so. be holding the torch. Leading Darn right, right I will. <laughs> leading the charge. Well, we really appreciate your time again. Thank you. I, I love talking with you. It's always a fun time. But always fun. Before we let you go, we're going to put you on the spot. But you're sneaking over here, so you know it's coming. <laughs> um, you know, the weather report, what in the industry has you excited? What forecast out there, you know, has you hopeful for the future? Um, and I'm going to steal from from Larry because I heard it earlier. It's just yeah. the whole uh, the whole getting youth involved, yep. right? So I've been thinking a lot about it in the last few weeks about, you know, this local high school that wants to put the synthetic field in. So let me go to that donor and let me ask if he can start, maybe we can do a turf grass program or maybe we can get some yeah. students that will come in after hours and let's let's see how we can save the school some money by doing stuff with natural grass. And I, and I think the advocacy committee um, and all that stuff, I think, is, is, is getting momentum and getting going. And I think mm-hmm. that's it. And then the safety. I mean, the safety of yeah. issues, right? So um, we saw a lot of very key players in the NFL get hurt. Um, yeah. One coach said something interesting to me at one point in time. She said, uh, it's a coach that wanted to put a synthetic softball field in, outfield. And she said, well, softball players don't get hurt like football players do. Sure. And I said, you want to bet, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And I wanted to say that. I didn't, but she, that's how made up her mind was. But yeah. so it's, it's a, it's a thing across there because they didn't talk about temperature and all that stuff. And I couldn't even go down that road with her yeah. because she didn't want to hear it. So I think it's, I think it's the education. I think it's just being proud of who we are and what we do. Um, I think it's, I, you know, Larry should be on TV. Yeah. Honestly, I, I think, I think the pregame wet down, there ought to be a camera on him. Yeah. And sometimes he's behind the scenes, but they ought to mention his name yeah. uh, and those type of things. So. Couldn't those agree guys, more. those guys, uh, you know, work their tails off day in and day out uh, for nothing. And some mm-hmm. of them don't want to be there. But I think I think we need to be more extroverted than introverted. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you would look at someone like Larry, Larry and be like, oh, he's an introvert. We put him on, you know, we got him on the headset and he's so <laughs> eloquent. So, you know, he can talk his talk his own. So, yeah, yeah it's it's not something we should shy away from anymore. Right. I agree. Definitely. I agree. Be so, proud of who we are. Definitely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you. It's been it's a pleasure and it's always fun. Always fun. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you.